Hey, what's going on? Coach Luca here, and today we're going to talk about the hips, right? I'm trying to get Sexy Tiger up in here, but what we're gonna, when we talk about the hips, you know, and hip health, all right, we're going to go over a protocol, and this is not the end-all, be-all protocol. This is just a number of different kind of like strategies and a process that you can go through that's going to really help you improve hip health. Now, I'm going to start off by, by you know, kind of explaining, you know, why the hips are so important. And imagine your pelvis is like a bucket. Right, and if, if everything is nice and stacked, then the hips should work well. But you know, the bucket can get pulled into all different directions. Meaning, like you know, if you have tight hamstrings and adductors, and you don't, you know, you're not breathing correctly, and your core is all flared up, right? The bucket's going to be moving and asymmetrical, and like you're going to have a lot of stuff going on. Like even even walking, you know, you, you won't be able to because just to walk and have a long stride, your hip needs internal rotation. Right? And if you don't have it, you start walking like a duck, kind of outwards, and a lot of weird things start happening. But, e but either way, the more you do you know, higher intensity things, it's probably gonna lead to injury and nagging stuff. So you know, what we're gonna go over today is, is, is a number of things that, first of all, we touched on in kind of every protocol, which is one, release, right? So if you're wound up and you have wound up muscles, whether it's quads, hamstrings, this, that, the other, you know, release those. Because once again, our lifestyle creates different postures. You know, sitting, so you're very like round in the top, actually lumbar is extended, upper, upper is rounded, neck is forward, right? So all those things create bad positions for, for a number of our joints. So what we're gonna go over is releasing, and, and, and I'm not gonna show all these release strategies that I've went over a number of times, because the reality is, like think about everything that is a surrounding, you know, the, the hip musculature. So meaning, you know, from quads to adductors to hamstrings, like all of that, but also, you know, here like abs, right? And, and being able to, to release that glutes, everything, like that's what's gonna align the bucket. So those are all the things that we'd, we'd work on first, right, if you're releasing. Now, specifically, you'd work on the things that are the tightest for you. I'm gonna show you guys some drills in a second that are, you know, I, I'll say more specific to adductors and, and, and hamstrings, just because it's like some things that most people don't dig into. And then from there, we're gonna work on, you know, resets. Resets just meaning we're gonna get breathing dialed in, and I'm, I'm gonna show you guys, uh, with, with actually Theo being an example, uh, talking about the infrasternal angle, right? So we'll talk about that in a second, and how you can do a specific drill to improve your infrasternal angle, which is gonna allow you to breathe better and put your rib cage in a better position, which is very important also for the pelvis and the hips, right? It all works together, guys, it all works together, right? So we gotta address that. And then we're gonna show some distraction techniques uh, for, for the hips, and then we're gonna show like mobility and strengthening, right? Now, once again, like we can kind of really go down a rabbit hole, but I want you to get a number of strategies and tactics kind of to, to do this that should really help you out. Now, what, what I'll say first though is, um, you know, if well, I'm going to show you kind of a little test that you can do anywhere on a bench. You don't need like this massage table that will tell you, one, if your you know, hips are really tight and if you have internal rotation. Internal rotation is very, very important um, when it comes to, honestly, anything from squatting to walking to running to sprinting to all these, all these things, like activities that you do. And if you don't have it, it becomes a problem. And some of you might even be having hip pain. Now, here's the deal with hip pain. If you go through these things um, that I'm going to show you, and you know you still have an impingement in the hip, and you got to go see a physical therapist. Matter of fact, like if any of the drills that like, I'm showing, you know, create pain, big difference between discomfort and pain, like actual pain that you know something's wrong, like stop instantly, right? So, uh, and, and definitely see a physical therapist, a specific person that's going to be able to help you out with that. Uh, but for what we found is that, in, you know, in, a, in 80 to 90 percent of the situations, like this really improves uh, mobility, strength of the hips, and improves internal rotation. So, this I'm going to lay down. You know, a lot of times this would be called the Thomas test. So, if you're on a bench, you could legitimately be on a bench, and you want the crease of the bench or the table to be right about halfway up your hamstring. And I'm just going to lean, lean back, lay back right here. And from here, what you're going to do is just pick up one of the knees and bring it up to your chest, okay? So, and, and pull it as much as you can. You can even go out to the side a little bit because that's gonna be more kind of natural to you. Now, notice that like for me, this leg stayed down. If you have very tight hips, what's gonna happen is, is as you pull up that, that knee, 
Yeah, like your whole pelvis is gonna go along for the ride, okay? So in this situation, I don't have that, but I've worked that a lot. But like I said, you're gonna see this happen, right? That means you got really tight hips. The other thing too is, if you know your, your knee doesn't kind of bend, you, you have a tight, what's called rectus femoris, which we've shown quite a few drills to do that. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is when you're up in that position and in that knee flexion, grabbing, would we'll say, the, the, the bottom side of the leg too and turning it in. Okay, now here's the thing. One, one thing is like how much can you even turn it in? So you can see I have some internal rotation here. It's not the greatest in the world, but it's, but it's not bad. Okay, now if one, if you're in here in, in, in flexion, and when you turn this in, you have any type of pinch or pain, right? Then you might have FAI, femoral acetabular impingement. And what we're gonna do today is go over like, maybe clearing that up a little bit for you. Uh, but once again, I said, you might just be, you know, in certain situations, it might just, you might have a pincer or a cam or, you know, it's a bony block, which needs a different type of addressing. But like I said, this is what we're looking at here and turning in, okay? Once again, all right, so turning in. It's just, that's just a quick, like I said, test to see, you know, where you're at, right? So if that, that kind of, that pelvis just turns up, means this is wound up. But that doesn't necessarily mean, like one of the biggest mistakes that you see is that um, people will just constantly stretch the hip flexors, right? That 90-90 position. I'm not saying it's a, it's, it's a bad thing, but most hip flexors are tight, they're short and they're weak, right? We gotta strengthen them. So today we're gonna show like drills where you can strengthen the hip flexors, All right? So from here, we're gonna move on to showing, like I said, some of these release techniques on the, the kettlebell and the ball. And, and while, like I'm not gonna spend 20, 30 minutes just going over how to release everything because we've, we, we've done stuff for the glutes, glute med, quads with, uh, with body tempering, things like that. So today I'm gonna focus on two things, which is, uh, I would say the groin area, adductors, and then the kind of like that, where the adductors and hamstrings kind of come in together. So we're gonna work on, on those there in a second. All right, so this first drill, uh, using a kettlebell, and I'm using a kettlebell because there's a lot of different stuff that you could use for this, um, but a lot of places will have a KB, you might have a KB, and what's gonna happen is, like I said, like, you know, what's available. Uh, now, here's the deal, okay? If, if you're like, whoa, 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 where are you going with this? This is very, very sexy tigerish. You can do this in the comfort of your own home. You know, here at Vigor, if anybody does this, it's perfectly normal. Because like we coach this, we teach this. Um, but you know, if you're in a regular gym doing this, somebody might look at you a little bit weird. So it's up to you. Now, once again, there's different things that you can use. I'm a big fan of also having a manual therapist, like for us, it's Dan Swinsco, who does FR release, active release uh, strategies, things like that where they'll get into your adductor and groin area and really help improve that tissue quality, which I highly recommend. But this is something that you can do by yourself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get into that adductor area and you wanna go up high into the groin area, right? Because that's where it's gonna be gritty. That's where all those tissues kind of come in. And from there, you can just hang out, right? So you find, and trust me, when you find that spot, you're gonna be like, okay, right? This is that gritty spot. And then you can just hang out on that spot, let it release. Now you can kind of move a little bit and rotate in and out, but you don't have to spin. I would say, you know, this is not like a grinding, move back and forth a ton thing, right? And I'm gonna internally rotate here. So you're just finding those tissues, right? And trust me, I'm, I'm finding those tissues here, okay? Just keep a little brace, I say, so you're not like extending a ton. And like, we're just talking about a minute, 90 seconds, two minutes, like letting those tissues kind of let go, right? And then you can internally rotate a little bit more. Ooh, poof. found it, right? So the thing is that, that you have, uh, in this area is what's called a zone of convergence. It's just like a lot of the tissues that attach in that groin area. You know, and it's an, it's an area where most people, you know, it's like, oh man, I don't want to go there. If you get massage, you're not asking people to massage your groin area. But if you have a good manual therapist, like they won't have a problem with it. Now, and like I said, look, I'm, we're talking about hip health here. So if you get uncomfortable with this stuff and you'd rather have your hip be, uh, be bugging you, up to you, your call, right? So once again, 
finding those different areas and like spending a good amount of time with it, just breathing through, not you know holding tension, that's an important one. Uh, and once like you could, there's other like so right. There's other things that you can use uh, that that would be a good tool for that, right? Number two, you can use a lacrosse ball for this. Uh, I like this. Uh, this is the mobility wop ball. I forgot what it's exactly called, but it's bigger and it has these creases in also, and, and it's firmer, right? So what you do in this scenario is, and this is where you use a bench because it's hard to get in on the floor, right? But I'm gonna let my my leg should be able to hang because we're gonna use gravity, right? So maybe I'll turn towards you guys a little more here, right? We're gonna use gravity, obviously, to pull down. And so imagine like where the hamstring and the adductor come together. That's why I also got these, these sexy shorts for you guys so you can kind of see what's going on. But uh, I'm gonna find that in-between line here and get on it and like whoosh, right? Right away I know where I'm, where I'm at. So I'm gonna stay up right here and now, once again, you can internally oosh, rotate. I can bend the knee, extend, right? Because that's gonna kind of do a pin and stretch technique. I can turn in a little bit, which is exactly what you usually wanna do here. And then same thing, bending and extending, slight rolls. If it's something that's really, really tender, just spending time on it. Ooh. Right, I could just chill here and trust me, the more upright you get, the better position you get. And stretch again, right? So there's no like completely, I would say, golden rule here. But one thing that's for sure going to happen is this is going to start being a lot more uh, loose and not wound up. And once again, we talked about that bucket, right? How the pelvis is the bucket, and if the bucket is getting pulled in one direction more or one way, it puts your the femur right inside of your socket is not gonna move smoothly the way that we want it to. And that's what kind of like starts banging up the hips, okay? So with that said, those are the two different strategies when it comes to release. And I'm saying like we, what we didn't touch on is releasing quads, DMO, like all, you know, glutes, which a lot of times we'll do those too, uh, depending on a, on a client or what else, but I've already shown you guys that in other protocols, so I didn't wanna go over all of those again. Right, so we've talked about breathing so much uh, as far as, well, it's, it's important for a number of things. Obviously, respiration and being able to get as much uh, oxygen in, but it's also like the positioning of the rib cage, being able to get air into that thorax and rotate and so on and so forth. But it's also a strategy to, uh, I would say, take people you know, and make them less toned, meaning if you're very stressed and you're, and you're, and you're a chest breather, right? Like you're going to, number one, be a lot more tone, right? Sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight, right? So we want to get out of that because when you're tone for, for uh, many a times, like you're not breathing correctly, so you're just not going to have that good position of the rib cage in the pelvis. And so for many of clients that come in, you know, after they do some sort of release stuff, and, and to be honest with you, we've been using less and less uh, aggressive strategies for uh, soft tissue work, not to say they don't have a place, but because the breathing a lot of times will resolve a lot of those things, right? If somebody's wound up, if they breathe, they get into, like they get to release those muscles and get into better positions. So I'm gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through just the basic breathing real quick, okay? And from there, I'm gonna go with Theo over some other things that, uh, that take into place uh, the infrasternal angle and the, like the way that people breathe, okay? And, and a couple of drills on how to start working on that and improving that for you. But this is just a basic 90-90 drill. And honestly, like this is the drill that we teach a, a lot of our clients just to, I, I actually like to, you know, since we're talking about the hips, I like to be at this 90 degree position because now our, fit, uh, our, our hips are at 90 or even a little bit above. And I'm, re I'm relaxed here, right? So it teaches us in this deep squat position to, to, to belly breathe and to just breathe properly. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a full exhalation and, you know, what we used to do sometimes with blow balloons, but now we're just trying to get all the air out, right? So so air out through mouth and breathe in deep into the belly through nose.
So what's happening here is like I'm, I'm exhaling for about four to five seconds, holding for about four seconds, inhaling for four to five seconds, holding for four. So it's like box breathing, right? Four to five, each one of those. And every time you exhale, what's going to happen is your rib cage comes down. And then as you breathe in through your nose, you're going to expand that belly 360 degrees. So the air is going to go all the way down and then start coming up. But that's your focus, right? When I exhale, rib cage comes down. And I think about breathing deep into like literally into my groin. So the air is going to go down and then start coming up. And there's a number of things happening there, right? I mean, one, it's like breathing trains your core, but it's getting our rib cage down and like teaching us to blow air into our belly and having that, that call a zone of apposition, right? The, the diaphragm's in a good place. And so this will, most of the time, first of all, like it gets your clients more relaxed. It takes them from, you know, fight or flight to more kind of rest and digest. And you might be saying like, well, but why would you do that right before a training session? Well we're breathing and then from there we're going into dynamic warm-up so we're going to ramp that back up again right but it's getting them out of just being tone and, and and chest breathing and it's getting them into a better position all right so the next one i'm going to do is i'm going to show like this uh super simple drill with the infrasternal angle and give you guys a couple of different exercises that you can do to start working on that whether it's in warm-ups or whether it's for your recovery days and uh we probably won't touch on that today because it depends on the clients but it's something that you can use All right, so what we're gonna do with, with Theo now, and you can see, you know, he's laying down, he's flat. And what the infrasternal angle is, imagine like where his rib cage uh, kind of comes into the sternum, the bottom of the rib cage comes into the sternum. What we're gonna do is we're going to measure this, or should I say, just get a, get a, uh, a look at where he's at. Now, I, I know where he's at, we actually already did this, but also if you're a coach, you know, you wanna, for, if, if, if it's a male or a female, but especially if it's a female and you're a male, like you wanna ask for permission to be able to, uh, you know, measure this and get your hands there, right? But what we're gonna do is get our, get our fingers and thumbs together and like go all the way up into that, like I said, bottom of the rib cage and push into where we find that angle. And you can see, actually, if I'm gonna bend my elbows down right there, if I come back up, you'll see that Theo is more than 90 degrees, right? So if he was 90, he'd be right about there. If he was narrower than 90, that would be his infrasternal angle, but he's more than 90, right? And based on if it's wider than 90 degrees or if it's narrower than 90 degrees, we do different exercises uh, and positions, which we're gonna show you in just a second. So what we're gonna do with, uh, with Theo right now, first of all, you know, based on the infrasternal angle that we talked about, Essentially, it's all about a strategy, uh, and like, I, first of all, I got this from Bill Hartman and, um, and Mike Robertson, and you know, if you dig into PRI, this is where these strategies come from, but it, it essentially comes down to, you know, how your infrasternal angle is, is based on your strategy for inhalation, right? And if you have a wide angle, your strategy for inhalation is taking air in, and if, you, if your strategy for inhalation is taking air out, putting air out, like you said, you're gonna have a narrow infrasternal angle. So we address this with two specific different drills. Now, what you'll see is Theo's like got his feet up on the bench and he's gonna bring them up. So this is, this is to address, we're gonna start with this because this is for him specifically, which means that it's like he has a wider angle. So I'm the same way. Most people that lift, you know, a, a lot frequently and have for a while will have wider angles. So he's gonna go 90 degrees here. He's gonna dig his heels in. So he's gonna to go toes towards him. Uh, you're going to slide back just a little bit with your butt. Okay, so we get about a 90 degree angle here. So what Theo's going to do, first of all, he's going to push his heels down into that, into that bench and lift his pelvis up just a little bit. So imagine you're, there we go. So he's got just a little bit of a lift there. Now I'm going to give the, this bell to him. And what he's going to do is grab and like, he's just going to reach up, right? So he's reaching up here. Now at this position, like he's going to, you feel the hamstrings on this? Mm -hmm. Yep. So he's feeling his hamstring, trust me, like they're gonna be on fire here. He's gonna reach up towards me, I'm gonna give him a little bit of a cue. And now he's gonna take an inhale through his nose and lean back a little, let that come back a little bit. And now you're gonna inhale through, uh, exhale through your mouth as much as you can. Nice, now he's gonna inhale again. 
and go back a little bit more and exhale and keep reaching here keep reaching keep reaching keep reaching keep reaching nice keep driving those heels into the into the pad one more inhale and exhale again and coming back a little bit more and break and relax is that challenging shit <laughs> so what what he do it'd be uh, two sets of five breaths is kind of what we want to shoot for Maybe that belt, the, the key is not for that belt to be uh, heavy at all. Uh, you know, I mean, it should have some, like I said, some feedback for him. But the tough part, like I said, is as he's driving his heels in and his pelvis comes up a little bit, he's creating, like I said, that, um, that canister that we talked about. And then we're using the exhalation strategy, once again, to get the infrasternal angle from wider to back more to that 90 degrees. And another thing that I like to do with people that have wider infrasternal angles is to exhale through the mouth, right? So not through the lips, but what we call open mouth strategy. And the reason for that is because uh, most of the time people that have a wider angle, uh, they'll use their neck muscles to exhale. So keeping an open mouth strategy means that those muscles will be relaxed and he'll be able to do that. Now, I'm gonna show you guys two, two regressions here. So, if, imagine a uh, feel is going to slide back down a little bit. Uh, so get your feet off the bench, like on the floor. So imagine kind of like a little bit of a glute bridge position. So slide back. Oh, actually, I'm going to move this. Don't worry about it. So there's two ways we could do this. So to, to regress one step, uh, we could have a two inch board where Theo would be putting his heels on and then doing the same thing where he's driving down into that board, lifting that pelvis up but exactly just like that, and we'd go through the same strategy, or the last one is exactly what he's doing right now. So we're just gonna have him do one rep, right? Because everything here stays the same. So he's gonna go, he's digging in. So if, if you can't do the proper breathing, it's very hard for you with feet up, we'd go down to a new two inch board. And if, if you can't do that, we'd go down here and start here. So you can see his pelvis is off the ground a little bit. He's, he's digging his heels in, he's getting his hamstrings on, now we, we cue that reach, takes the air in, and he comes back down, and he exhales. There we go, and he's using that open mouth strategy. You can see it's pretty damn challenging. Air in through the nose, one more. And pull him back a little bit, and again. And break. And like I said, we do, we do five, but like, that's is, is, is very, very challenging. But you'd use this in warm-ups and or on recovery days. Like I said, it really depends on the client, the athlete. Um, but you can't go wrong by doing this with a wide infrastructure angle. And like I said, you could do this many a times a week, and that's what's going to start getting, uh, getting it kind of fixed up. Now, we're going to move to strategy like, like number two, which is this would be a, so Theo's going to go on all fours on his quadru on, in a quadruped position. So if you have a narrow, so if you have a narrow infrasternal angle, this is what we'd be using here. So we're gonna start, uh, get those hands just a little bit further up here. Good, there we go. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna cue Theo to push uh, long, to have long elbows, long arms, right? And he's doing a great job here because what he's doing, he's pushing away and getting as long as he can from this area. Now what will happen a lot of times when you ask people to push the ground away, they'll round over here, right? You'll see this, and we don't want this. We want this to be nice and relaxed and soft right here, but just pushing up here, and you can see the change that happens, okay? Now, what we'll do in this position now, we'll do the same thing. We'll ask him to breathe in air where my hand is, and then exhale fully, and keep reaching. Reach, 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 and you can see, I can actually feel it, air in, and breathe out and keep reaching, 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 keep reaching. good. So that would be the same thing. We do two sets of five, five breaths. Now, if he was, if that was very, very easy for him, what we would do is step back just a little bit with that knee, okay? So now it, we're gonna use this kind of bear position, but he's gonna just lift his knees off the ground an inch, right? So now he's off the ground. All of it, most people will wanna collapse here. So you can see like he readjusted. Same thing, taking air through the nose, blow it up right here, and exhale, and keep reaching, 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 reaching. 
One thing we can also do is kind of get his pelvis under him a little bit. Tuck the pelvis a little bit. There you go. And just give me one more rep. There you go. Breathe in here. And exhale. And break. Now that is a very challenging, guys. Like you guys are seeing this and going like, oh, he's just doing a kind of crawl position hold. No, 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 no. Right? The reach, the breathing, tucking that pelvis under to kind of get that good, like I said, canister is massively important. And they're only like, there's another progression here that we can do. And that is the, um, it's, it's pretty much a crawl. So we're going to go into that quadruped again. Uh, knees will stay on the ground. But what Theo's going to do now, I'm actually going to just move this bench a little bit so you guys can see just like one or two reps here. So if, if he was going to take a step, so Theo's going to take a step with his right hand forward and then with his left knee forward. And so he's going to start his first, uh, he's going to do the same thing. He's going to push away. Right? And from here, he's going to take air in once again. And he's going to breathe out, and he's going to take another step. So alternate. Good. And now he's going to do the same thing here. Right? Keep this nice and soft. Push here. And breathe out. And then you take another step. And break. And same thing. We probably do about you know, five steps and just take a 30 to 60 second break and do another set. And this is stuff you can do every day. And there's a lot more. That's why it's very, you guys can see that, like, me coaching him. And obviously, he's very, he's, he's got a ton of experience with this and does great with all this stuff. Um, but even, like I said, guys like us need coaching because sometimes we don't know that we're rounding here. Our pelvis is not under getting that full in, inhalation, knowing which regression to take. Uh, it's important. But this, this will be a game changer, uh, like I said, when it comes to your training, when it comes to just the positioning and when it comes to your breathing. And so even though this is a hip, like I said, this is a hip protocol, we're talking about hips here, like th this will significantly help. Because once again, your pelvis, like right, this canister, if it's in a good position, your hips will be a lot healthier. So from here, I wanted to go to some, uh, I'll say, band distraction techniques for the hips. And there's many different ways to do this. The, the two that I'm gonna show you are, uh, I would say, more around creating that internal rotation. Because once again, like what the hip, the hip distraction does, it just pulls that hip and creates more space in the socket so we can get that hip moving more freely. And you know, the one I'm gonna do is like, we need internal rotation for the squat. And so I'm gonna get this band high up into my hip, right all the way up here. And then I would go to 45 degree angle, so I'm gonna kind of talk to you guys sideways. You can see that 45 degree angle. I'm gonna go into essentially my squat stance and push my, my, uh, my hips through and then pull, like and I wanna have a good amount of tension here too. Right? right now that's a good amount of tension. And I'm sitting back into it, right? I actually probably wanna move out even a little bit more here. Okay, so I'm sitting back into that squat and going through and sitting back. And like I said, you wanna make sure that it's right in that crease and it's pulling that apart. Now, if you have some type of impingement, this will usually help to, for, to allow you to actually sit back where you usually couldn't sit back. If, if you're getting to a certain position and it gets a little funky, create a little bit more tension, right? Keep that core engaged and then just slowly rock and try to get and groove back into that, right? Or just rep it where you couldn't get it before and then just go deeper into that position, okay? And the thing is, there's a lot of different, like we could use hip distraction, you know, uh, in that 90-90 position and work that, right? So there's a lot of different places that we can do this with, but I wanted to show you, like I said, a couple that said most people have a lot of benefit with when it comes to just getting that internal rotation. The second one, I'll actually switch up here and go to the right, is gonna be on the top. So I'm gonna go straight, directly forward, right? And from here, get it all the way up to the top right here. So it's pulling back. Now, this, you can keep the other bent, uh, knee bent, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this up, okay? And usually it's not gonna be directly up because usually the you know, hip sockets kinda of go out to that, to that side and you can see how I can get further down here. Now from this position, just like there, it's, it's, this is gonna be 
uh, I would say you want it to be passive because we don't want to, you know, if, if I drive it up myself, I'm going to turn those hip flexors on. So I want to now internally, externally rotate that hip. So we've, we've created some space and now we're just grooving. And, and I have, like I said, good internal external rotation, but this feels great, right? Because of that band distraction, I don't feel some of the tightness that even like if I get to these end ranges, I feel before, but I can really groove that and help with that movement, right? And so you can just work this for time. You can work it for reps until it just feels a lot smoother. And you'll see that you can, a lot, you know, many a times after this, go do a movement that before, you know, would bug you, it would be tight, and now it just feels smoother and it feels better. Okay. Good. So from here, what I'm gonna do is, you know, talking about strengthening uh, the hip flexors and how important that is that, you know, and I'm bringing this up because most people stretch them a lot, but don't strengthen them. In this first part, I'm gonna show some integration of core plus strengthening the hip flexors because once again, like if you don't have a, a good position of the core, then your pelvis is out of place and it's really hard to strengthen the hip flexors too, right? So we're gonna do some basic, I, I would say, kind of progression, progressional drills here with, with dead bug. Um, and the dead bug, like I said, because I wanna show you guys some levels, right? So we can go, this is our base position. We're still, we're, we're like I said, in this position where my rib cage is down and from here I can exhale and bring that leg out. And I'm actually driving this actively up a little bit, okay? Coming back in. Okay, so this will be like a level one. Now I breathe out so I keep that core on and that rib cage in a good position, right? And each, a, a rep on each side would be one rep, okay? Now, for some people that's challenging. And so we wanna give some external guide for them to turn on their abs, which now I can take the band and I'm gonna pull the band over and just holding it here really keeps my rib cage down. And from here, I'm gonna do the same thing where now I don't even have to exhale that much because the rib cage is down, to make, but you can do it just to make, make it harder. Okay. Okay, so we're working. Now the cool thing about this, we can do a straight leg drill here also, which is also working hip flexors, right? So I can be here, put one leg on the ground, extend the other one, and now go lock out that knee as much as I can. Remember, keep that knee locked out, otherwise we're cheating that range. Right, we can even stop in certain positions and do these short reps. Okay, now, I'm, and like I said, I'm bending this knee so I can keep that back flag, keep a neutral pelvis. But once again, just pulling that band can kind of create that rib cage position. But essentially what we're doing with those is the same thing, we're strengthening hip flexors, engaging core. From there, this is a band drill uh, I've shown you guys before, but we can go now and get some I would say external feedback here, because when I start in this position, from here I can push out, but like maintain or drive up this knee, right? And obviously this is above 90 now, and we're working that hip flexor, okay? Now same thing, if somebody starts losing the arch or something like that, we can combine these two and just go overhead here, bam, and now punch, Whoo, whoo, spicy. Come back up. Right, abs on fire. And like I said, and I'm doing drills that are essentially, you know, strengthening my, uh, my hip flexors. So from here, we're gonna move into some very, very kind of uh, drills that are specific to just strengthening the hip flexors and also adding some range of the motion and show you that in a second. So here's some drills that are simple to do um, that will strengthen the hip flexors. And 
So, some of them are like, I want to show you some, some stuff that's like a daily thing that you can just do from sitting in a chair, um, as well as things that are going to create that max knee flexion, max hip extension. But this first one is essentially kind of like our 90-90 position. You can open up that back foot. You know, this could be a wall. I'm just doing it against the rig right now because it's convenient here for to show on a camera. So I want to be, if I was at the wall, my elbows would be long and I'd be pushing into the wall, right? So here, I'm probably going to keep one arm off just to kind of give you guys uh, some, be able to show it. And so imagine I'm pushing both into the wall and from here, so because I'm pushing into the wall, it's engaging my abs, right? So I can't extend and cheat here. So 90 degree position, front, back, and I'm here. Now I'm going to lift. Right, so if I was, let's, let's do both, give me more stability. So I'm just lifting that knee up, past 90. You can do 1,001 holds, you can do five second holds. Notice I have long elbows. Like I said, if, if this is engaged and we keep that, that bucket, right, in the right position, now we're gonna train the hips. Okay, what's cool about this is that like you can do different positions. I'm not showing you this guy's right, right uh, uh, all the positions, but I could be here, but I could also be here and turn out a little bit. And once again, right, because if you think about if you're doing a lunge, right, your knee's gonna be here. If you're doing a squat, you're actually gonna be more, a little bit more opened up, right? So with that said, somebody turned on the techno. Tony turned on the techno. It's real. It's real. So here, we're gonna go, you could be at, at, at 90 degrees. I'm actually a little bit lower here, but this is just a super simple drill that you can, you can work at. You know, if you're in an office and you're slouched over and you know, you're typing and you're arching your low back, it's in a, I mean, you're extending your low back and then arching your upper back and then falling forward, right? And you have a reminder, not only to get into better posture, but now to grab down, push down into your, the arms of the chair and stay upright, so core is engaged, and now we're just lifting, right? You can do 10 second holds. One side, the other side, right? Work those hip flexors, and then you can go a little bit more out to the side. Same thing, lifting, right? You can do those positions and still work on that a little bit because if the hip flexors turn on, right, you're gonna, it's, it's, it's a great way to get out of back pain. Like I said, you know, most people just stretch the hip flexors but you gotta strengthen the hip flexors. You know, from here I'm gonna take you to this variation, which I love for uh, a number of things, right? Because when you look at athleticism and athletes, there's a couple of things that you want. You know, think sprinting, jumping. You want to be able to flex the knee maximally and then extend the hip maximally, right? So this is a great drill, and this is a box squat, so we can adjust it, where I'm gonna bring this knee up and I'm gonna drop that hip. And if I can get that, and I can actually get more, I'm gonna bring that hip even further back. So pretty much, I'm just gonna be in this position. And one of the drills is just hanging out here, right, for two minutes. I got good posture, right, I'm just breathing. Right, the second one is like me actually pushing my foot into the box. You know, so I'm pushing it down for five to 10 seconds and then trying to rip it off for five to 10 seconds. Even though if I can't, I'm still trying to drive that knee up. Ah, and then trying to get that hip a little bit further back. Right, so if you think about um, an athlete, right, when they have to sprint, like they want that maximum separation to create that force and power. This is one of these drills that does that. But once again, it gets us into better positions, works on the internal rotation as well, which we talked about. And if we do those pails and rails drills, we can actually strengthen it as well. Okay, so from that, from here, I'm gonna take you guys into you know, some of our favorite stuff that anybody can do and everybody can do. Uh, and it's gonna be cars, so FRC cars and some um, end range ISO holds that we do in pretty much a lot of our small group personal training or team training. Uh, we incorporate a lot of this. People have seen fantastic results from doing this you know, three, four, five days a week. Um, and they're very, very simple to do. I'm gonna go show you guys some, I say, rules to this. Uh, but we'll be back in a second with that. So I'm going to go over a, a number of different things. Like sometimes as I, as I go through these sequences, I remember 
things that we do that are very important, so I just plug them in. Because like I said, to me, this is pretty much just like coaching you guys um, on, on different strategies uh, that you can, you can use. So the 90-90 hip position is like, I mean, this is honestly just one of the, the, the better drills for, uh, for hip health and, and strength and control. And yet, like some people may, um, you know, I'll, I'll show some or explain some regressions to things like this. As far as, you know, some people say, like, if I can't get in that, this position, you know, what do I do? Um, and there's regressions to it, meaning, like, you know, yoga blocks under the knee um, that, that you can work, shortening ranges of motion, so on and so forth. So, one of the things, like, that, that this 90 90 position um, is, I'm gonna actually make sure that you guys get a good angle here, but is coaching this, like, number one is just like coaching it appropriately. And what I like to, first of all, make sure that I, I, I share with everybody is that you want to get that belly button and your sternum. So imagine if your belly button and your sternum have a straight line from them, that we turn them both and then line them with the knee, right? Because what that does is it turns my pelvis, right? And into this neutral position. So I'm not twisted at the uh, low back trying to do this drill. So essentially if I had like one of those laser lights um, you know, that you kind of put on a board or whatever, right? <laughs> that you, you annoy people with the eye in, uh, is like you want to turn that, that belly button laser light right in line with the knee. And same thing with the sternum. They both should be aligned with the knee. And you're going to feel usually like this internal rotation of the hip now, now feeling a little bit more, uh, I would say, you're just going to, you're going to feel it in that socket. Now, if you have pain, right, then we're going to adjust where the, po the position of that is. Or we might, you know, uh, create create some type of restriction to where you can do it. So I'm gonna turn here, and number two, like I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna push my butt back, like I'm gonna do a deadlift, right? I'm driving that butt back, even though I'm still tall. I'm do I'm pushing that butt cheek back. Okay, I call this the bow and arrow. Like actually, Dewey I think calls this the bow and arrow. I learned that from him was, you know, the knee is kind of pushing forward, the butt's pushing back, like like a bow and arrow, right? You're stretching them apart. So even though you're upright, you're already feeling this big stretch here in the hip, okay? Now from, thi from this position, you know, whether you can do it without hands, usually most people have to have some support. We're gonna push back and pull ourselves down and think like a, this is like a lift, right? So chest is gonna come to knee, knee's gonna come to chest. I'm actively pulling myself, keeping that low back flat. And then when I come back up, I'm gonna push my knee into the ground Okay, and I'm gonna pull myself back down again. Right now, there's a lot of different ways to do this. Like, we'll, we'll do this for five reps up and down and then just relax into the stretch and breathe here at the bottom for a minute to two minutes. So those tissues kind of are able to now be in that position, right? And that's what we'll usually focus on. And that's kind of the, the drill that I want you guys to like really just work on right now is that and not worry too much about, uh, I said, the, the different things that can come from that. Because from this 90-90 position, there's a lot of different things that you can do from, you know, getting some tension, elevate, bring through, bring it back to this position. You know, we'll, we'll go here and elevate and then lock out the hamstring, right? which is very challenging. But once again, like this is all progression-based stuff. Majority of people can do this 90-90 position. Now the second part of this one that I, I think is very, very beneficial for just about everybody is if I'm in this 90-90 position, one of the great ways to work internal rotation of this hip here is to lean back a little bit. Now the more upright you are, the harder this is, right? So most people actually have to lean back a little bit. And now I'm gonna to try to turn my belly button towards that knee, hard, right? So as soon as I start turning that, I feel a huge, I would say, stretch. And so the more I try to turn it, the more I'm training that internal rotation here on my right, my back leg. And from here, you could just get to this position where it's challenging for you and just hold for like two minutes. And I'm breathing. I do some breathing. Can I get a little bit more? Can I get a little bit more? Right? So challenging, but once again, 
it gets that hip internally rotated. Very, 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 very beneficial. And then you slowly kind of come out of that position and we go do whatever we're doing next. Now from, from here, like I said, that 90-90, like we, we use that in classes, we use that in semi-private and small groups. Uh, it's great and we coach the crap out of it so that people get really good at it. And, um, and it's, it really does show tons of progress for people's mobility, strength, hip strength, like getting out of nagging pains, low back feels better. Okay, so definitely a must, must do. From here, we're gonna talk about controlled articular rotations. This is what FRC calls uh, CARS. It's short for controlled articular rotations. Uh, FRC is functional range conditioning. It's a system. Great certification, highly recommended for everybody. Uh, and I'm gonna, like these next drills I'm gonna show you guys are based on that. And this first one is our quadruped position. You know, and you may have heard of this as, you know, just kind of fire hydrants, right? Like you might have seen fire hydrants or hip circles here. But it's very, very important that we do this the right way. And this is kind of like the, the, the base position from the ground where we're in all fours. And a lot of times what I'll actually like to do is put a tennis ball here and squeeze it, right? So we kind of get activation. So I'm, I'm gonna pretend like it's there. So I'm gonna push the ground away a little bit, get some engagement. Like abs are gonna be on. Okay, I have good position in my spine. And imagine now, like I said, I'm squeezing this, this tennis ball here. Nothing, like my hip, is moving in my socket, so I'm gonna bring my knee forward, and then I'm gonna come up as high as I can. Remember, my, my low back's not moving. From here, I'm gonna internally rotate my hip as much as I can, and then kind of bring it back. Drive up, drive up, drive up, drive up, drive up. Keep my core on, bring that knee forward. Drive up as much as I can. Internally rotate, start rotating. Right, and I would go through those sequences, maybe even slower. Now, I, I can even see myself doing that. I'm pretty sure if Theo was coaching me up on this, he'd find spots where, one, he can guide me more to internally rotate, come around, like that's one of the keys and then what we do in our mobility classes. And so that, you know, you don't really know where you're at. You don't know what, sometimes you're like, oh, I'm in the right position but really you can get way more internal rotation, extension, and so on and so forth, right? But you can see what I'm doing is I'm taking my joint through these four ranges of motion and it's slow and controlled. That's what I call controlled articular rotations, right? And we're rotating internally, externally, like we're getting that feedback inside of the joint and controlling and strengthening it, which is really, really, really important. And we'll drill that on both sides, but not like this is not supposed to be, you know, you've probably seen stuff like you know, people just repping this or just this. No, this is slow and controlled. And, you know, if we see a spot that's kind of uh, wobbly, we actually have people hold it there and do these minor uh, controlled rotations because they start getting uh, a hold of it. So imagine, like, if you can't control every part of that joint, it's not a healthy joint, right? So that's, that's this on the ground drill that we'll use now to mobilize slash strengthen. And from there in a second, I'm gonna show you guys some standing drills that, that are a progression to this. So this, what we just did on the ground on, on all fours, this is a standing version of it. And it's obviously harder because now we have gravity, we, we're not, you know, we have less stability, we're standing on one leg. But I like to use the rig for this because you can hug it and, and, and not cheat as much. So what we'll do with this, once again, this is called cars, right? The hip, hip cars. And we're gonna stand close to the rig and it could be against you know, other objects where I can stand close, give myself some feedback, and not like slide the hip out, right? Because if you're standing straight, like a lot of people might do this. So we just give ourselves some feedback to pre prevent us from cheating, right? So we're gonna align the hips, right? We're also, I like hugging this because what you wanna do is you want everything, you know, when we teach this in classes, we'll go around, make sure people's shoulders, chest, abs, quad, everything's flexed. Right? That's why become, this drill becomes very, very hard. And we're doing that so we don't compensate. Right? Because if you don't have tension everywhere, and I start doing this, you'll see like extending the back, shifting the hip. Right? There's a lot of compensations that can happen. And we want all of that movement coming just from the hip to be able to strengthen that hip through all those ranges of motion and really control it. Right? So I'm going to go up to this right here. I'm gonna grab it, I'm gonna align my hips, I'm gonna squeeze, I'm gonna create tension, 
Now I'm gonna start an external rotation. So I'm gonna start here as much as I can. So, right, I'm externally rotating my, my, my hip as much as I can, creating that tension, and I'm, now I'm gonna drive and flex, 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 flex. Remember, trying to get this heel up as much as I can. From here now, I'm gonna start internally rotating. Right, so I've, I'm flexing as high as I can. I'm internally rotating until it doesn't go anymore. And I'm starting to come around and extend that hip. Whew. Right, my abs are on. Now I'm coming back through and I'd go again. External rotation as much as I can. Flex. Once I get here to neutral, I drive up more. Internally rotate. Notice how controlled and slow this is. And come back around. Doing that for three to five reps is massively challenging. We'll also go, you know, the, the opposite way. So go into extension first, right? Coming back around and doing, doing the same thing. And once again, what's great is that, like, when you find weak links, as coaches, we'll have people you know, stop and even guide them a little bit more into that internal rotation, right? Just give them a little bit of feedback. And this is very, very challenging. But what we're teaching is for that joint to be able to move and control and strengthen through those ranges of motion. And if there's any pain, we don't do that. We stop, we go, we, we use a range where there's no pain, right? Which a lot of times will carry over to eliminating pain and weakness in certain areas because once again, when you build isometric strength in certain areas, it, it transfers to 15 degrees up and down, but in all 360 degrees, if that makes sense. That's why isometrics are powerful. Which brings me to the next part, right? End range iso holds. These are fantastic. We almost do these on every squat day now. We'll do these as the last part of, of um, I would say our, our warm ups essentially. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is it's the same thing. I'm gonna get in that same position. Everything else is gonna be engaged. I'm gonna grab my knee and bring it up as high as I possibly can, right? Passively, right? So I'm passively bringing it up as high as I can. Now, I'm gonna engage everything. This glute, chest, abs, create tension in my shoulders. And as, as, it's, as high as it possibly can be, now I'm gonna start creating tension and slowly start letting go. And hold, hold, five, four, three, two, one, and re-grab and pull up again, right? So our goal is to not let that knee drop more than 10%, okay? Which is very, very difficult, okay? So we're active, we're not just trying to hold it there, we're actively trying to drive it up. And what we're doing is building isometric strength in what's called those end ranges, right? And we can continue to improve this. What's fantastic about this is that I can go straight up here, but then I can bring that knee out a little bit, which is more maybe a natural squat for most people, hold here. I can also go completely open up without rotating the hip. So how far can my hip go right about there? And hold that, right? So those are, and we'll usually do two sets of 10 seconds, maybe three sets of 10 seconds. So hold for 10 seconds, regrip, pull back up again, create tension and do it again. Once again, now we're drilling these end, these end range, in, end, where the hell am I at? But end range isometric strength which transfers to like everything. We could, we could do a ton of different drills where we're showing this, you know, for, for hamstrings, right? Where you get the stretch, we create prep, tension in, pels and rails, you know, lift offs, all of, all of these different uh, variations. And like I said, we don't have time to go into every kind of method that we use from end range holds to lift to end range lift offs to like a kinetic stretching to all these different like tools that are fantastic but I wanted you guys to have a bunch of different things that you can work on now that will already improve your hips from, like I said, making them stronger, more durable, healthier, getting them out of pain, getting your low back out of pain, uh, improving your performance, right? So these are fantastic. Like the cars and range lift offs are phenomenal. And the next part, what I'm gonna just do is kind of like finish off a little bit with showing some activation drills before going into exercises uh, with Dio and drill him through that. And and just talk a little bit about on uh, which exercises to choose that are a great fit for you so that you get stronger and don't bang up your hips. 
All right, so what I'm going to do, like right now, I'm going to take Theo through a drill. So you guys have seen all these different things that we've we've done to improve, kind of like first of all, get a release, get stability, get mobility, get you know strength in those ranges. But like th this is an example of uh, doing a drill before to to kind of not only pattern this, but to activate and then use it to, to go straight into a strength exercise. So this is a great drill I learned from Pavel, probably like. Or some people will say Pavel, but I think it's, uh, it's Pavel. And I'm Eastern European, so I can say that, by the way. Uh, but that that will will train the hip flexors in that squat pattern. So what I'm going to have Theo do, and usually people do it without this, I like to actually add the band. So Theo's going to pull that black band behind him into that overhead position. Slide up a little bit. There we go. So that we do just like what we did earlier, which is activate core. Right? So now he's going to pull that down. His, his abs are going to be on. Now he's going to extend, so we're going to start at the bottom, right? I'm going to pull on his toes here, and what he's going to do is like imagine that he's pulling himself in into that squat position. So I'm going to keep resisting, keep resisting, keep, once you get to the end range, keep pulling, uh, get those toes up, there we go, there we go, yep, 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 keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, now I'm going to pull you down, and I want you to resist, but let me, let me go down, good, 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 I'll do going to one more rep, pull up, nice, keep driving, keep driving, keep driving, keep driving, keep driving, three, two, one and relax, right? And what's gonna happen, like I'm gonna have Theo stand up and I'm gonna give him this bell just to have him go into a goblet squat. Because now there's two things that are happening. We can, you know, I can say like, hey, I want you to have that same uh, uh, format of pull yourself down into that squat position. He'll understand it because he just did it, right? We just did the drill and that's gonna help him do it. So he's just gonna do like three to four reps. I'm not gonna have him like get all, all crazy and whatnot. But like pull yourself down into that squat. Pull yourself down, pull yourself down. And then push up. And I promise you, I mean, we didn't do it before and after, but like, let's go again. It looks super smooth. I mean, Theo has a great squat, but I can tell one more rep. And drive up. Nice. Right, so what's happening right now is like, first of all, we, we were activating these end ranges, right? So now when he's doing that squat, he's, looking, feeling way better. So he's not tucking under, his low back's not kicking in, right? His glutes are firing the way they're supposed to. And what's really, really important, we're gonna end on this note, is that, for instance, if Theo has really bad, I would say upper back mobility, right? He can't extend, he can't get his shoulders under a barbell. To get him to do a barbell, you know, is gonna put him in a bad position. And so at the bottom of that squat, he's not gonna be able to activate the, you know, the glutes in a good position is probably gonna kick into his back and he's gonna have issues with it. So it's very, very important to choose the best exercise also, right? Because you could do all these things right and somebody just doesn't have, you know, uh, the anatomy of their hips don't allow them to go squat super deep and you, you're putting a barbell on their back and having them squat super deep, that's gonna bang them up. Deadlift, you know, somebody is just not in a place where they can have a good position off the ground to deadlift, right? You want to choose a trap bar deadlift, you want to choose an RDL, you want to choose things that are going to be a good fit for them. So all these drills are great, but let's also make sure that we're picking the right exercises for the goals of that person and uh, for their health history and, and like I said, their assessment that it fits, right? You want to make that, make that fit. So with that said, hey, use guys, use these strategies, these hip protocol strategies, and I promise you if you do them, hey, look, you're going to feel better, you're going to perform better. You're gonna get a lot of, out of a lot of nagging injuries. And also remember like, hey, if, if, if something is, like if you have FAI and all this stuff doesn't help you out, hey, go see a physical therapist that's gonna help you out and create a plan together with a coach like us to, you know, to get you back to 100% and then some. But that said, hey, we'll see you in the next kind of round of protocols and we're out, peace.